Hi everybody, this is James with Cad Roll Hunter, and today we're going to do something completely different for my channel. We're going to go through a coin collection and see what we find. So I was out earlier today with my friend Kieran, as you can see here, and apparently you can't spend time with me uh, for very long without me talking about coins, apparently. And as we were talking about coins, he said, you know what, James, I inherited a coin collection from my grandfather and I don't know much about coins, he said. He was really interested to understand what it was. He He's had these for a long time, but doesn't really know much about them. And so we talked about it and we decided, or he asked me if I would go through them to see what he had in his coin collection. He knew these were important coins to his grandfather and wanted to learn a little bit more about them. So we've got a couple things here. We've got this tin and you'll see here it says uh, Canada 1999-2000. So I'm assuming this might be coin related. In 1999 and 2000, as you know, in Canada, we had some commemorative coins that were put out, but I've never seen this tin before, so I don't know. And then this is the Royal Canadian Mint logo on this box here. So I'm assuming this is a mint set, but I haven't looked in either of these containers. And so I think we'll look at the mint set last because I think we probably have a better idea what that is. But what we're gonna do is just open this up and look at it. He said there's a collection of coins, some international coins, some Canadian coins. And so we're just gonna see what he's got here. Um, I might recognize some of them and I might not. So what I'll do is we'll open this up We'll have a look at what we've got. If I need to sort of pause and do a little bit of research to find out what we've got, that's fine. I'll do that too. But I haven't opened this and Kieran hasn't opened this in a long time too. So uh, we're both kind of uh, not exactly sure what we're going to find in here. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, I've cracked the lid and it's hinged at the back. And so, okay, so I can see a couple familiar things already and some, some, uh, some interesting things. So what we've got here... Obviously, we've got some paper money, some international and Canadian money. So we'll set that aside for a second. We'll just take a little bit of a peek. And it looks like we've got some uh, an interesting collection. I can see some Canadian. There's a 50 cent piece. There's an American quarter. Looks like we've got some older Canadian silver with King George V here. It's been hold. It might have been used as a, some kind of an ornament. Got some American... All right, so we're just going to take these out. We're going to look at them one at a time. I think maybe what we'll do is just start with the paper money first before we get into the coins and see what we got going on. Okay, so the first thing that we've got here is a bill with two on it. We've got some characters on here. Zhongguo, Renmin, Yin Hang. If I'm saying that right, 1980. I'm going to have to look this one up and see exactly what it is that we've got here. But obviously, this is uh, paper money from uh, from Asia. And I'll be back in just a second with a little bit of info on what this is. Okay, so I've looked this up. And this appears to be Tu Zhao from China. And so these were issued from 1980 to 1990. This is, says 1980 on the bill. And the way paper currency works... This issue might have been issued for those 10 years looking at, with the 1980 date on it. So we've got that. We'll move on to the next one. This is a really tiny bill here. This also appears to be Asian, of course. But there is no English writing on it, unlike the other one, which might make it a little bit harder to understand exactly what it is. But I'm going to try and see if I can look it up and give you some information. Okay, so this is apparently a one fen banknote from China. This was issued starting in 1953. It's hard to know exactly when this particular bill originated from, uh, but I'm wondering if Kieran's grandfather spent some time in Asia and picked these up on his travels. Um, this, I've already seen this bill here. This appears to be a uh, one yuan oh no one jiao one jiao so it's the uh, similar series 1980 as the two jiao that we saw here so we've got a couple of banknotes in the series from china 
And this last one should look pretty familiar to a lot of Canadian collectors. This is the 1954 series of bills with Queen Elizabeth on it. It's a $1. This is the modified series. So the original bills up by the Queen's hair were called the Devil's Face or Devil's Head bills because the curls of the Queen's hair appeared like the face of a devil. They actually had to redesign the bill and redo the portrait so it didn't uh, look quite so devilish, I guess. So this is pretty circulated. It's got BD and Razminsky's signatures on it, but that is a little piece of Canadian history there for sure. So we'll set the banknotes aside and we'll look into what we've got in here. Well, I think we'll get started with the big guy here. This is an Ike dollar, United States $1. And this is a bicentennial commemorative, 1976 from Denver. You can see the mint mark just by Eisenhower's uh, neckline there. And so, yeah, this is a commemorative $1 coin from the States with the moon and the Liberty Bell on the back. That's pretty fantastic. So we'll see what else. We got another American here. This one looks like it's been painted. So this is a 1973 nickel, United States of America. Interesting. I'm not sure what happened. It looks like it might have been painted. Uh, third party company. It wasn't painted by the mint, that's for sure. But somebody did something. It looks like most of it has come off if it was all done, but that's pretty interesting. And of course, there's another American. We'll take a look at this one next. So this is a Philadelphia minted quarter. And this is from 2004. So this is one of the state quarters that were put out. There were state quarters, I think, from 2000 or maybe 1999 until maybe 2006 or 2007 as they worked through all of the 50 states. And then, of course, they went through the territories and then they went through the national parks. But this is the Iowa one again, pretty circulated. And uh, but we can see some other uh, interesting forms. Well, here is a dime. So it's almost like we've got a U.S. typeset here. Ah, this is a 1967 U.S. dime. Ah, and here is a token. So this is Canadian. It's uh, 1967. It's the 100 years since Confederation token. I'm not sure if these were part of mint sets or if these were just sort of handed out in public ceremonies. But... Um, that is a pretty interesting piece of Canadian history for sure. I only just now noticed that this case here says the official Millennium Keepsake. And so this was uh, issued by Canada Post in the year 2000 to commemorate the new millennium, the switching from 1999 to 2000. And so I haven't yet seen if one of these is the Millennium Keepsake. There is an indent in here, the size and shape of this 20 euro cent, which is actually in, in set here, but that's obviously not the Millennium Keepsake. There's a spot for it that this has just sort of fallen into. So we'll look and see if that's actually still here. But we'll start with this. This is a 20 euro cent. And this is dated 2002. Okay, what else we got? Let's see. This looks to be like a German coin. Nope. One euro cent. And this one, if we can get nice and close enough. Or we can throw it under the scope. And there it is. It's a 2002 with an F mint mark. So that's a one euro coin. All right. This one looks interesting here. This is a five euro. And I'm interested to see if it's also a 2002. No, it's a 1999. And it's really common for people to get into coins when they actually travel internationally because they see things they've never seen before and you you know you take some home with you. I'd be interested to know those of you who are watching this video how you got into coin collecting. Was it foreign coins? Were you given coins like Kieran was from his grandfather? 
I got into coins because I had an uncle, Uncle John, who was into coins when I was a little kid. That was sort of our thing that when I'd go to visit, he would show me what coins he had gotten for his collection. And when he passed away, I inherited his collection. And by that point, I was an avid coin collector. Of course, when I inherited those coins, I went off to university. I got interested in other things. And I kind of stopped for a while. It was really only in the last few years that I went back through to see what I had been uh, given by my Uncle John and really got interested again in coins. And so I'd be interested to hear how you got interested in coins. Was it as a kid, as an adult? Did you just develop it on your own? Were you given a collection? What happened? Let me know. Put it in the in the uh, comments below. I'd be interested to hear from you. Okay, let's see what we got. This one is big, but it's really light. Ah, it feels like it's aluminum. This is Apollo 2. Oh, Apollo 11 mission? We'll see right here. The first men on the moon, July 20th, 1969. I've never seen this. This is incredibly cool. Look at that. Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Collins. So that's pretty fantastic. That's a, a, a totally collectible keepsake. All right, we'll keep it up here. What do we got going on here? So this is one euro. This is a bimetallic coin, kind of like the Canadian Toonie. This one also from 2002. Really neat. One thing I've noticed about the euro coins is that they tend to highlight a different member nation on the... I'm not even sure if this is the reverse or the obverse because there's no... Uh, there's no president, there's no monarch, but in any case, this probably signifies or is a symbol, symbol of one of the member countries of the euro, and I don't know which, and I'm sure we could look it up, and I'll, I'll probably put it on the screen here when I do look it up, but that's pretty interesting. It looks like we've at least got a couple of more euro coins, so this is another 2002, and that is 10 euro cents, so that's interesting. And then over here, another 2002, 50 euro cents. So I wonder if Kieran's grandfather had traveled to Europe in or around 2002 and picked these up in his travels. And we've got another one here. And this is a 2003 and it's two euro cents. And I recognize, and many coin collectors might recognize, this looks like an oak. Um, very, f looks familiar like uh, a lot of the, the German uh, coinage, like the Fennig coins. And so I wonder if this is sort of a, I guess, a uh, commemorating Germany's uh, membership into the European Union. All right, I'm going to set this aside for a second and see what we've got right here. And this looks very interesting. So again, we've got some Asian characters, 10. And this is probably Chinese again. I think I'm going to have to look this one up just to see exactly what we've got here. And I'll be right back. Okay, well, thank goodness for Numista. Numista.com. If you don't know if that website, you should become familiar with it. So this is actually not from China. This is from Japan. This is 10 yen Showa, the smooth edge. And I can see on this coin, the smooth edge. And this is from 1973. And so if I bring the Numista website up here and scroll down, it actually will tell you the year based on the characters that are on the coin so you can decipher it. So that's what we have here. 1973, 10 yen from Japan. Okay, and here's another interesting coin here. This one is three something from 1964. From India, so I think it's three rupees from India, 1964. And again, this one's very light. This is also aluminum as opposed to nickel or some uh, heavier alloy. And there is another one in here that has the look of aluminum, and it certainly is. And this is a one, it says. And I believe this is also from China. I'm going to look it up just to be sure because I've been wrong before. But we'll have a look and I'll be right back. Okay, I looked this one up too. And this is one yen from Japan. And this is from 1972. And it's aluminum. 
And uh, now we've got some other coins. Let's take a look at this one first here. This is five new pants from Great Britain. This one is a 1978. This is um, some kind of nickel alloy. And we'll take a look at this guy here. Now we're getting a little bit older here. There is King George VI. And this is a half penny from 1944. So also from Great Britain. So that's a great one. That's the uh, oldest of the coins that we found so far. But it's not the oldest one we're going to find here because, well, let's look at, we'll save that one. We know that one's old. Let's take a look at what we got here. Well, let's start here. All right, so we have a Canada 1977 50 cent piece with Queen Elizabeth on the back. This is also pure nickel. And speaking of nickel, here is what I believe is a Canadian nickel, Elizabeth II, the Laureate portrait, 12 sided nickel. And this is a 1961, so that's a great little find for sure. And then the rest of these here all look like they're going to be silver. And I apologize for the glare. So here we have one with the diadem portrait. And look at that. This is a 1967 commemorative confederation. It's got some toning on it. That's older silver coins will do. And let's see what else we got. So this is a laureate portrait. This is also going to be a dime. But this one is from 1960. This is 80% silver, so that's great. And then this one is going to be something similar. Is it going to be newer or is it going to be older? We'll find out. Ah, this is 1953. So this is the first year for Elizabeth on Canadian coinage. And then the last one here in the collection... This is King George V, so we know this is going to be older. This one looks to be in a bit of a rough shape. It's seen better days, and somebody's punched a hole through it. But this is 10 cents from 1916. So this coin here is 105 years old, and that's pretty phenomenal. And I think this 1916 might be sterling silver, and I'll just confirm that on screen here if that's in fact what it is. We finished this particular tin, and I don't think we found the Millennium Keepsake that was supposed to be in here. But we did find a bunch of other really interesting coins to go through. And we've just got this one last thing to see. All right, well, we've got it out of the box, and it's this beautiful case here. You can see this metal maple leaf on here. This is a mint set, obviously from 1995, as you saw. And so Kieran told me that this was... Um, coins from his birth year. So he was born in 1995. And this would be really common. I was born a fair bit before then. But I have a very similar coin set just like this from my birth year, which is incidentally 1976. And so we'll open it up and look at that. These are just gorgeous. You can see some really interesting toning on that silver dollar. But look at that frosted finish there. But you can see that toning on the edges. The 50 cent piece, everything's frosted. That quarter, look at that penny just glowing with those frosted maple leaves. That dime with the blue nose schooner. The nickel with that frosted beaver there. And then, of course, the loony, the one, $1 coin. And we'll flip these over to see that portrait of the queen. And I think those scratches that you see are just on the case itself and not on the face of the coin. But look at the beautiful finish of those two. So tell me in the coin in the uh, comments if, um, if you got something like this when you were born. I think this is pretty common. I got these. My sisters got these. I think my parents gave these to their grandchildren, my sister's children. And so let me know if you have things like this from when you were born. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed my video uh, here with Kieran's uh, coin collection going through that. It's really interesting and fun to go through a bunch of coins and you really have no idea what you're going to find. It's the story behind these coins that I think is really interesting. So how did Kieran's grandfather come across these coins? Probably in travels um, and these banknotes as well. Let me know again in the comments um, how you got into coin collecting and where you've gotten your coins and banknotes from. 
Please subscribe to my channel, Cadroll Hunter, if you haven't already done that. Hit the like button for sure. Show the video some love. And don't forget to hit that notification icon so you can see when my new videos come out. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.